Okay, now the print we believe is finished. Maddie, would you lift up the uh, and turn off the noise? We've got this hinged in this vacuum frame. Okay, Ed, pull that off, Maddie, without ripping the paper. This is our fancy registration system. And as you can see, look at down here. The image is quite brown, but there's a good printout image here that you can judge the quality of the image with. Let me bring it down. It's still sensitive to light, but as you see, we put 900 units. This is a fairly slow process. We're going to take it over here with the lights on. And I'm going to develop it in water. And as you can see, the image is developing up. This is due to the exceedingly strong development action of the guanidine ferric oxalate. Okay. Looking good. Maddie says looking good. She's good at judging these things. Okay, Maddie, I'm going to transfer this to you. Okay. Get my hand out okay. of the camera. And while that's sitting in the water, I'm going to mix up some clearing agent. This is a concentrated sodium, metabor sodium metabisulfite and EDTA. Sort of kind of looks like hand cream. We're mixing up a fresh batch. I'm going to put 25 milliliters of ammonium, concentrated ammonium thiosulfate. Now, bleach, fix. I'm going to throw this one out. We had some problems with that one. These type of silver prints will oftentimes bleach out in fix, so we just want to give it a very light fix to cut the fog factor. We're going to fix this image. Move in on this, Maddie. We just want a light fix and clearing. And I'm going to watch for any bleaching action. We will do a fix at a later time uh, after we've finished. Now, toning is very critical uh, to images. This image would dry and, and be a pretty good image. But the silver is out exposed. It's not in a colloid. A gelatin silver print, an albumin print, uh, if you were to use casein or anything else, what would happen is the silver get exposed to the elements in the air, uh, fumes and stuff like that, and would start to uh, deteriorate in 100 or 200 years. So, and the color, you may not like that color. Uh, this color uh, we're going to change this color with a selenium fix. Now, Typically, I'm going to mix that up here, fresh. In the past, people who tried to use selenium used Kodak Eastman's selenium toner. It is loaded with thiosulfate. Uh, you do not want that sulfate. It will turn the highlights yellow. And it doesn't give you a good, good black. Now, I'm going to use 25 milliliters of the Bostic and Sullivan thiosulfate free 
And we just have a small amount left here. Didn't prepare for this too well. Of uh, concentrated sodium metaborate, which used to be called Kodok. It is basically to an alkali that will convert, uh, will allow the toning action to take place. So now Maddie will move in on this. We're coming out of the clearing agent. I'm going to go back over here and give it a quick rinse because everything we've been doing is acidic. Now the outer margins on this have done some little bit of silvering and, and solarizing. This negative is pretty, pretty dense. The center section looks pretty good. We've got maybe a little bit of uh, solarization. This is, I'm going to put this in. I'm going to add the toner. Now this can take up to a half an hour to get a full tone. But in the beginning you're going to see some color changes taking place. Do you see it, Maddie? I'm colorblind. Is it changing, Maddie? Uh, it's starting. Okay. Darkening. Darkening. Good. You probably want at least a two or three minute tone for archival purposes. What the toner does is actually replacing the silver. My understanding is that a bromide print, a la the old enlarging stuff that's pretty much obsolete now, uh, the toning puts a coating on the, the silver grains, but uh, with this, with these are metallic particles that have been reduced out of the silver nitrate and what we're doing here is replacing them with selenium. We could probably go up to a 85 or 90 percent replacement as <clears throat> anybody in contemporary photography knows selenium is an archival uh, toning that's used by virtually every major silver gelatin enlarging printmaker from the turn of the century on. Uh, well, actually not from the turn of the century. The uh, Eastman invented, as far as I can tell, the selenium toner uh, with the 1939-1942 patents and they had up to 300 to 500 grams of ammonium thiosulfate per liter. That's why you cannot use the Eastman selenium toner, uh, the sulfur gets into the print and causes a yellowing. As you can tell here after about one or two, about two minutes, Maddie, guessing? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've gone from a reddish, what would you call yeah. it? Yeah. What, a, ru a reddish rust. Rust color to mm -hmm. what uh, is more like a sepia now? Yeah, it's a dark sepia now. Mm -hmm. a touch of green but it's darkening, cooling. Uh -huh. It's cooling. Okay, and we can uh, hit sick. that 